Hey guys, uh, welcome to another Brushmaster video. Uh, this one today, it's it's a little short one just to show you something that a lot of people keep asking me about, and that is how to rescale STLs and how to get consistent sizes and the right sizes. So I'll show you a couple of the methods I use, which um, you can use or not use, whatever you you like. There, you can do it either way. There's there's sort of three or four different ways to do it. Um, but I'm I'm sort of not a hundred percent trusting of Chitty Box, so there's a couple of ways around here that you can just make sure that you're getting them to the right size. Now on the screen right now, you'll see that there's just this big block, right? So when I look at that. When I do the scaling of that, you can see it's 74.56 millimeters tall. Now, in fact, I know I I made this block inside of ZBrush, and I exported it at exactly 75 millimeters. So it may have lost a half a millimeter on the export process, but it is roughly 75 millimeters. So now, if we we have a miniature. Okay, and this guy here, um, who's from Creature Caster, is a great, great miniature. I'll put his name in the description, I can't remember at the moment. But he's fairly small, and as you can see by the Z axis here and on here, ZBrush is telling me this is 36.28 miniature, uh, 28 millimeters tall. So if I want to get that around that 75 millimeter size, I can literally scale this up until I roughly hit what I think is about 75 millimeters, which is about that. Okay, so that is one method. Next to my block and using the scale in, I can now see he's roughly 74 millimeters tall of course you don't have to have the block in there to do this you can just do it with the scale and things but if you're trying to do things by eye this can be a way of doing it the other method you can do this of course is by the slider at the size here side here is what some people don't quite know this will give you like a view of slices as if you were slicing through the model but if you hold it you can also see it's got a sizing tab on it so if you get it roughly to the top of the model there you can see it's 74.56 you can also go to the bottom too and do it this way which will tell you, you know, as the model disappears right there right it's around 74 to 75 mil that's one way to do it okay uh, well that's several ways to do it right there um, but does this the other question I get asked is does this work with supported models uh, of course it does, but because they're normally raised, there are angles and all that, how do you get them the right size? And this is when I use this method, guys. So if I click on this model, now I've resized it. When I come here, I can see I've increased it by 205%. If I now click on this model and change this to 205 and hit tab, Make sure lock ratio is on because it will expand it in every direction. Now, although it looks a lot bigger, I know this model is now the same size as this model. So that's one of the things right there with sizing. So you can do it with unsupported models and supported models. Of course, if you've got just a supported model, you've got to do a little bit of jigging around. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is you can move this model down to roughly eyeballing where you think it is. You can, of course, it doesn't go the right way. And you can move it down to where you roughly think it's on the platform. So around there. And then you can use the block. As you can see there, it's about the right size. So there are other ways you can do it with supported models. It's a little bit, because I know I've bought packs before and they only contain supported models and I always like to paint things a little bit bigger. So they're a little bit more awkward. 
but see here you can jig jiggle this about until you can see he's roughly flat and then you can use the 75 mil block or you can actually use the slider then still so it will still show you where it is in relation to the bed or the platform not the overall model this will only show you from the bed the platform up so if you sink something below like if i move that down for instance now you'll see it'll still only register when i get to here and i say that's 52 millimeters now so if i was to print that like that and cut them in half it would only be 52 millimeters so the other question i get is about hollowing now hollowing and putting holes in what i always do i get a model like this as you can see he's completely solid i may not want to print all that stuff so what i always do first of all because if i can't get the hollow in right and i'm going to trap resin or whatever i just don't do it i print it solid so i take a copy and we'll move them out of the way so if this one fails i've got a copy hollow in select hollow in and i nearly always choose the grid and what can happen sometimes if you've got little thin arms right what can happen is it'll hollow down to there say then you'll get a solid bit and then you might get another bit of hollowing and then there's no way to release the resin that's trapped in here and it will expand and probably collapse or crack over some period of time so when i'm modeling a model like this i start off by making it a little bit thicker so this is 2.7 mil we'll do the hollowing that's good right and what i'll do then i'll blow him up a bit and i'll check the hollowing so there's none in his head the hollowing's coming down here his arms are solid 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 so that size is pretty good for hollowing all right so there's no real unless we've got a bit in the head here all right so see right there that's a cavity now if i go below that cavity there's no hole so this is what you've got to look for when you're hollowing so that cavity there Will have trapped resin in it so we can either what well, what i'll do here is i try and do control z i don't know if that undoes hollowing or not it does right so a couple of options we got here we can increase the size that's the first one i would try always because i don't mind if it's a little bit thicker the model but the bulk of it i just don't want to print so we'll try that first of all. So let's see what we get here. So if we, right, no hole, no hole, no hole, all the way through. Now our hole starts in the model and that works all the way down. And that way is fine. The other way is to make the shell thinner but then you've got to be very careful you're not trapping doing the same as we just had with the head but in the arms sometimes you get the elbow joint is very thin and you'll get like i said a cavity then a wall then a cavity and this cavity is going to trap resin so now that we've got it's hollowed out now we'll start checking for uh, see if we can make a hole because we need somewhere for the resin to escape now I always try and make the hole as big as I can and as deep as I can all right so I always start there so I've got a fairly big hole done there it is that's all you need that that hole is the answer sometimes again with these numbers um sometimes it's just the hole will just not go in there and you know, i've tried everything and it just won't work on some models and i i would suspect it's because there's faults in the mesh or there's just areas that you just won't put a hole so if the hole fails 
I tend to try changing the depth first of all and just change these numbers until you can get one to work. Sometimes you'll have to do a smaller hole and put two or three little holes in there. I do that quite often as well. You just want somewhere where the resin can escape afterwards so that there's not resin trapped inside. So there you go guys. I hope that's helpful. Some of this may seem terribly obvious to a lot of you, but I'm, I know there's people out there who don't know this stuff who've asked about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for a Brushmaster video.